Well, at this point, we've seen a little bit about working with the tag selectors and even working with custom class selectors. But there's one element, one category of the CSS properties that I didn't really explore up to this point, and that is the CSS box model. So let's look at both of our custom classes. First, we'll start with the image, and then we'll start with the simple quotation custom class that we created over here before. And we'll start with the image discussing the box model because it shows us a little bit about what we're doing. For example, everything in CSS is a box. Or in other words, every HTML tag or anything that we're assigning information to can be seen as a box. So what does that mean? Well, here we have an image which is rather boxy in its shape, so I think that should be a good way to describe this. And if we attempt to adjust the image information, we can double click on the float left, and that'll bring up the CSS rule over here. Or remember, you could always click on the edit rule pencil icon right here too. And this time I'm going to ask you to go to the category called box. Well, in the box model, what we can define for this particular object, or image in this case, is padding and margin. So how does that work in the box model? Well, when you're defining in the box model, anything on the inside of that object will be defined as padding. Anything on the outside of that particular box is defined with margin. So for example, if I did say same for all and I said a margin of 10, and I applied that, you'll notice, hey great, it's giving me some space over here on the side. Remember, we wanted that extra space, but it's also done some other things. It's giving me too much space down here at the bottom, which I didn't need. And it's also giving me an extra 10 on this side, which I didn't want either because I would like the way my box and my text lined up nicely here. It's really only on this side that I wanted extra space. So it won't be same for all. Actually, rather, an easier way is to just set these all to zero, then take this off and say, hey, zero everywhere except on the right-hand side, which has 10. And now if we apply that, notice, nice, even here, no extra space here. That's just normal. It's given us because of the paragraph here. But as you can see, we've got this nice amount of space on the right-hand side over here, and that's just great. Notice this. You see how the picture doesn't quite line up with the L over here? Well, let's see. If I wanted to, I could say, how about like just a little bit of margin on the top? Like, Let's try two pixels, see what that looks like. Still maybe a little more. How about four pixels and see what that looks like? See that? Now I've got these things lined up quite nicely. Maybe even five pixels. Again, that might change depending on what browser you're in. But if I like that and I wanted to preview that and see what it looks like, let's preview it in Safari and see what it looks like. And you can see, yes, you know, it's a little bit smaller than I wanted. Four probably would have been better. See, it's always good to preview it in your browser. And remember, if you don't preview in the browser, you could always preview in live view. Not live code just yet, but live view. And as you can see, live view is giving you a brief rundown of what it looks like. If you don't like the fact that it is set to margin top at 5, we could say 4 instead. And that just brings it up a little bit. Looks a little bit better. I'm going to switch out of live view. All right, so back to our code view, and our regular view. And if we preview this in the browser, we'll see that yeah, things are pretty much lined up exactly the way I want. Space over here, Space on the bottom was there by default, so that's great. But notice here, right? Ah, nice and easy. It's all lined up just perfectly there. That's great. So that's wonderful. It's given me exactly what I want it to look like. And it's done so by adding space on the outside of the box, which is margin. Well, let's take a look at some things like padding and see what that's all about. I told you that we would revisit this quotation custom class, this one right here. And you'll notice when I select it, that's an area which is defined as the box. In order to see that better, let's double quick click quotation and we'll give it a background color. Look, I'll just say white background color. And if I press apply, we can see the area which is being defined as my box. The background color defines the box. All right, now we can also see that my text is really squished up against the edge here, which I don't like at all. So let's do a couple of things. Go to the box model. 
And if I wanted to move the text off of the edge of that box, that's inside the box, not outside the box like we did with the picture, but rather what's in the box. So what's in the box is defined by padding. So here I'll define same for all. I'll say give me 10 pixels all the way around and I'll press apply. And you can see now that this looks decidedly better than it did just a second ago because we got the text right off the edge. But notice I'm still keeping these edges the same and that should you know look pretty good. So whether or not you have a border around that or anything like this just by putting the box in this fashion and keeping things aligned but indenting them the way I'm doing here can really make things look a whole lot nicer for you. It really all depends on what you want it to do and how it's supposed to look. If we quit that and we want to change the padding, you could change it here or you could double click the quotation icon yet again, go to box, and you could say maybe even more generous, so about 20 pixels. Well, if you apply that, I got to be honest, it's probably going to be a little too generous, but whatever, let's keep it like this and we'll see. So I'll preview that in my browser, click OK, and check it out. 20 on the top, 20 on the sides, bottom, and the right hand side as well. So that shows you a little bit about the box model. Margin controls the outside of the box. Padding controls the inside of the box. You can apply it uniformly on all sides or you can apply it only on one side or two sides depending on what you want to happen inside of your view. So that's a little bit about the box model. The box model will also be something that we're going to be addressing a little bit more in detail when we start talking about laying out your pages using CSS. So we'll come back to box model a little later on. But in the next example, what we're going to be doing is looking at these links and starting to style our links.